say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in Farmer's Kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In town, Farmer's Country Kitchen. cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello Mrs. Farmer. How are you? You're looking outdoorsy today in I your feel, flannel shirt. I feel outdoorsy. You know what? It's syrup time. Mm -hmm. You know when we took stock of our farm here and we were taking the ash trees down we found all these maple trees and I thought we're gonna do it. That's now right. we did this several years ago, several several years ago and it's time to reboot. So today we're gonna show you the actual process of gathering the sap. Now the one thing we'll talk about when we're doing that, we can look into the woods and see our bags hanging. Right. We know how much we've got. So today we have several steps. We've got a couple good recipes for you because you know, March Madness is right around the corner. The Super yeah. Bowl. These are really good, really quick. Right. And we've never had anybody that just wasn't absolutely knocked out by these mm -hmm. particular recipes. But first tonight, we put our bags out. That's right. We've tapped our trees. Let's see what we find. Look at that, Mrs. Farmer. Look wow. at that drip. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Now, one thing I found out that I like about these bags, now some people use milk jugs, some people use five gallon buckets with tubing, so on and so forth. I can stand up on that hill there and I can see 11 bags over here and I can see exactly how much is in each bag. So this is a three gallon bag. That's, that's unbelievable, from a day? Know, that's almost two gallons right there. I can look over there and say, there's a gallon, there's two gallons. So I can say, in this little stand of wood here, I got 10 gallons. You just hung this yesterday. This just was yesterday. just hung yesterday. Is that that's not unbelievable. Cool? So that's the one thing I really like about these particular bags. What we want to do is show you how to do this on your own property on a limited scale. We're not going to try to make 60 gallons of syrup. We're going to try to make a couple quarts. So no presents this year? Just no for presents, us. Okay. unless they're like in thimbles. <laughs> but we don't need a whole lot of... of uh, syrup, but we did a very small batch the other day and it ended up really good. It was good. Now we did kind of two control batches and what we found out is if you go too long you're going to end up with candy. Yeah, and you like it's that too. It's good. You I mean it's candy. sugar and you can kind of break that up and it's yeah. almost like brown sugar. So they did different things back in the day. Some people wanted the sugar, some people, and you can carry that with you and use it for a natural sweetener or you can make syrup. Now here's the thing about syrup that you buy in the store and they got us the other day. All natural maple syrup. Mm -hmm. We get home and look at it, the all natural is all natural corn syrup, all natural brown sugar, all natural duh. Yeah. There is no syrup in it. Maple extract, almond extract, sometimes some vanilla extract, whatever. If you go to buy maple syrup, pure maple syrup, mm -hmm. you know what the ingredients are? 100% maple syrup. Sap. Boiled down, reduced into syrup. We want to make this as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. When we do this boil down process, it's a fairly long process. So we're going to take this, dump it down, and we're going to cook it over propane. You can do it a small batch on your stove. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that too much. You're going to have a sticky, sugary substance that will get on your ceiling and walls. You don't want that if you're going to do a lot. But you can do a small batch in your house if you want to get like two cups, yeah. so on and so forth. So let's gather some of this. This okay. is, again, one day. Jeez. So let's gather the big bags, take them to the cabin where it's nice and cool, set those inside, and we'll boil it down the next couple days. Right. Is that not cool? It is neat. Now, you know, we've talked to Bobby Joe and Lois, and right. they've talked about planting by the signs, mm -hmm. making her sauerkraut by the signs. 
to she make swears sure. By it. Oh, yeah. let me tell you what. There's something to it. Right. I don't exactly know what it is, but it works. It has to do with the moon and the signs and the stars. And in a little while, we're going to talk about planning by the signs. Interesting. So we got a visitor. Mr. Phil Case is going to stop by, and he's got some good information on planning by the signs. But first, we've got our syrup. We gathered it up. We brought it up here. And now we're going to take just the straight bags, mm -hmm. and we're going to take a piece of cheesecloth and just do a kind of a early filter. Right. Put some cheesecloth over there and pour it directly into a pan and get that going. So now the old smokehouse over here has turned out to have more than one use. You take your turkey cooker, the base of it. That's right. Put it in there. Crank it up. Fit perfect. It fit perfect. <laughs> so we take a, a food service tray, I mm -hmm. guess you would call it, that you right. use in your catering so on and so forth. You set that in there. So anyhow, we're going to pour that off and get it to a boil. We got four gallons there. When it gets seven degrees above when it starts to boil, it was 209 degrees here right. when it started to boil. What we're going to do, we're going to go from a bigger pan to a smaller pan to a smaller pan. I want to keep that at about two inches in the bottom. Okay. And it gets sweeter and sweeter, right? It gets sweeter and sweeter. sweeter. You know how we did yes. it the other day. So at 216 at the end, when we know we're about there, we pour it off and we got syrup. So we hope to get, and what we've been breaking it down is about a cup and a half, hopefully, hopefully. Right. Now, the consistency of true maple syrup is not that really, really thick, thick, thick stuff that you get in the store. It's really, really thick. You have to sit there and wait on it to pour out. It's right. so thick. So they've reduced down sugar, 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 mm -hmm. brown sugar, um, probably um, corn syrup, right. and then they even add thickeners. And when it comes out, it's that really drippy stuff. And it has this real intense maple syrup flavor. Mm -hmm. It's probably maple syrup extract. Right. So what we have here is a way, way runnier product, but the taste Amazing. is excellent. Now, on a nice sunny day like today, it makes you think about maybe planting some plants. Yeah. And a lot of people can get excited about gardening. But then it's But before snow. <laughs> you do, yeah, it might be supposed yeah. to snow. Before you do, you might want to check with your farmer's almanac. Mm -hmm. Or in our case, Phil Case. He's going to come over and visit and talk about planting by the signs. I know nothing about this, but I'm starting to learn. I'm getting excited. Here's Mr. Phil Case. Guess who's on the front porch of the cabin today? It's Mr. Phil Case, who I've been wanting to meet a long, long time. We've been talking about everything and we solved most of the world problems in 10 minutes. No longer than that, yeah. No longer than that. You know what, for years people have been asking me, Tim, you need to have somebody talk about planting by the signs. I mean, everything from planting your garden to separating your calves from their mothers. I've heard them say, man, if you separate them under this particular sign, the calves aren't gonna ball as much. And is there something to this? Some people will swear 1,000%. The old timers really go hardcore on this. Some people say, ah, it's, it's voodoo. What do you think? Obviously, I think, <laughs> uh, I think there's something to it. And now that I'm one of the old timers, I can say with some degree of sincerity and certainty that I've planted enough gardens across the years in the proper phases and signs and enough accidentally in the wrong phases and signs that it, I can prove, I can show that it makes a difference just by using the proper phase of the moon and sign of the zodiac with your normally good gardening techniques. I mean, you have to water, you have to plow, you have to weed, you have to fertilize sure. and all that. You can't just go out say, well, I'm going to lay it down here on the driveway because Case said I can put it out in the <laughs> dark of the moon. I'm going to give me a turnip out of this thing. Well, that is going to work. So let's get back to the basics. Okay. I've heard people say you don't want to do it. Something about the heart, something about the head. How many signs are there and what do they mean roughly? There are 12 signs. Okay. Start with Aries, the head, and run through Pisces, your birth sign to feet. They run down the body two or three days each month and then they start over. Now the reason they don't go exactly the same way every month is because we, we're on a, the, our calendar's 31 days, 30, 31 days except for February. This is a 28 day cycle. So they run through the body every month. There are four very fertile signs. Okay. And I remember it by signs, plant, thick crops. Scorpio, the sign, plant, Pisces, the feet, thick, Taurus, the neck, and crops, cancer, the breast. Those are the four most fertile signs. That's when you want to plant. When the sign is in 
one of those. How do you find that out? Well, it's, it's in the Albanac. What sign rules on what day? Aries and Leo, that's the head and the heart. They are the killing signs. Don't ask me why. I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know that anybody knows the answer. It's just that they are the killing signs and I would not plant anything on the day of a killing sign. Then there are, there's a series of so-so signs that are run from the thighs, the knees, the legs. And one of the things that you do when that's happening, if you can catch a time when the moon is in the dark phase and the signs are moving out of the body past anything that functions, in other words, your stomach functions, your heart functions, all that. Your legs certainly function, but not in the same sense as an internal organ. This is the time to make changes. This is the time to stop smoking, to start a diet, to start an exercise program. I don't want any of that. Well, whatever you want. But if, <laughs> if you've got a change to make. Gotcha. You do so it's going to take better. It takes better. So if, you're, if you want to take the, the, the calves away from the mom. That's the time to do it. During those Dark times. of the moon, signs moving out of the body. Interesting. There are two phases of the moon each month. There's a light phase and a dark phase. There are 14 days each. January is one of those strange months that has two full moons. March also has two full moons, and February this year has no full moon. This particular configuration occurs every 18 years. That's how often this occurs. I found that out by reading Albanac. There you go. <laughs> I mean, it's useful information. You want to plant in the light of the moon for above ground producers. When there's no moon visible in the sky, that's the new moon until the full moon. Then you would want to plant below ground producers in the dark of the moon. That's from the full moon while the moon's waning, waning. going back now. When it's waxing, when it's coming up, just like it's up ground, up above stuff, the ground, down stuff. Gotcha. This isn't like for horoscopes. You know, where you read in a horoscope, well, my sign's Pisces, and it's a two-star day, and they say stay in the house. Or you're going to find money on Are Thursday. Are you going to find money? Are you going to have great relationships? They're so general. This hasn't got anything to do Nothing with Nothing to do with this. this. For those who think this astrology. is astrology, this is a whole different thing. And you around. see down this column right here, we have all the dates. Right. And then you run that across to the month, and you see the sign is in Leo today. Now, what kind of sign is that? Leo, Leo is, is not a good sign. It's a killing sign. It's a killing sign. It we is. don't want that. What would you recommend people do who are starting to put their, maybe they've got a greenhouse or they've got a, an atrium or an area where they can put some plants and keep them warm and start setting stuff out. When, when should all this begin? Depends on what the plant is. If it's a cool weather plant that enjoys cool weather and can stand frost to the cold weather, like cabbage, broccoli, radishes, onions, things like that, then within the next six weeks we can be planting those. Now if it's warm weather crops like tomatoes, peppers, things like that, you have to wait till after frost. So if you're going to start your own frost, is chance of frost is over. So if you're going to start your own plants, you want to wait to be about six weeks out till you put them, ready to put them in the ground. My friend and my yard associate, Mr. Ron Osborne, commonly known as Oz, who helps me with the yard and everything. We rented a heavy, a heavy tiller, not a lightweight tiller gotcha. down here, and we plowed the garden. Now, adherence to this system say, and it's true, you can plow the ground in January or February if it's wet, like it is today. You know how squishy it was walking right. up here. Normally you would say that's not a good idea because it's gonna get clotty. January or February, you can plow it, and the water, Mr. Van Meter said, can follow you down the furrow if you're plowing with a tractor. And that ground will not get hard or clot up, but if you wait till March. So, Jan listen, I'm taking all this in. January, February. Yes, sir. All right. January, February. I'm not hooking my plow up in March. I'm no. Going, I'm going early. No, this year. If, if you hook your plow up in March, you better wait the ground's dry. Plow. When did you first start? delving into this and when did you first start talking to folks about this? When did you start thinking or seeing the effects of this thing and said, hey, this thing works? Well, I came to Franklin County in the fall of 1969 to be the student pastor at the Bridgeport Christian Church, which oh, by golly, it's right, just right over, over the hill. hill. Yeah. There was a gentleman in my church by the name of Buford Van Meter. 
He did everything by the phases of the moon signs of the zodiac. He planted tobacco, everything. In the, they cut tobacco in the proper phases. They did not do anything without this. The church had a parsonage. My wife and I lived there. It had a great gardening spot. First year, I put out a garden because I loved it. And then I noticed Mr. Van Meter's garden was better than mine. That's how I started. And I said, why is your garden better than mine? And he said, I'll tell you, preacher, this is why. I plant by the phases of the moon and signs of the zodiac. I said, oh, that's crazy. You plant in the ground, you don't plant in the moon. He said, I'll tell you what, next year in your garden, I'm going to show you. Because you're going to plant when I tell you to plant. I was 22 years old then, probably 23 the year I did that garden. And I'm 70 now, so for nearly half a century I've been doing it. My column's in the State Journal every week. I'm going to post it on my Facebook page, which you'll have the address for. It tells you what to plant when. But if you can follow it, it'll just increase your yield. I have enjoyed this uh, much more than you know, and I want to thank you so much for well, coming out and visiting. And, and I want to have you again if that's... If that's, that's fine. That's fine. This is wonderful. I love it. I love talking about it. I love converts. I'm glad you've converted. I have people all the time say to me, eh, I don't know if I believe in that. A lot of people think it's voodoo, hootie doody. Oh, yes, and, um, yes, yeah, it's not. I think, and you're, you're a religious man. No. I mean, you're not you know, casting spells on me, I hope. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, we can learn something from everybody. Sure. And I have had too many old timers tell me this stuff works, and I'm gonna start paying a whole lot more attention to it. Why would you not want your garden to be the best that it can be? If all it takes is picking the day you plant it. I can do that, and I will do that. And I'm going to pick your noggin again. I'm, I'm ready for it anytime. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Dean. We're back in the cabin. Yay. Haven't been up here in a while. The weather's been off. Here's a picture. Look at this picture of the cabin with the snow on it. Isn't it pretty? pretty? It is pretty. Isn't it pretty? When we can get up here. <laughs> with your skis. Yeah. Ski up here. You know what? Um, leftovers. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Sometimes you have some leftover pulled pork. We always Not have Not very often, yeah. but sometimes we make a little extra on purpose right. because there's so many things you do. We made a Cuban not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Sandwich. Oh amazing. my goodness. Let's take this out, Nikki. All right. Now, there's a million things you can do with pulled pork. You can make a good soup. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Being that uh, sports is going crazy right now. Right. March Madness, I'm sure the cats are going to find what they needed. That's right. That game the other night, they looked good. They That's looked right. tough. That's right. Genius snack when next time you watch. All right. So anyhow, we've got this leftover pork. Now, when it sits in the refrigerator, it tightens up. You right. know, this was falling off the bone, but this is one we didn't use, and we wanted this for this, these particular mm -hmm. two recipes. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a little crock pot, and we'll go ahead and get it warmed up. So what we're going to do... And she's going to carve this up, being that, again, it's, it's been sitting in the refrigerator, so it's hardened up. We're going to take this. You want a big double handful. We're going to take that double handful we're going to put in the crock pot. And we really don't measure anything. We're going to use that much salsa. From there, we're going to take some black beans. And I'm going to say maybe about 8 or 10 ounces of black beans. Some corn. Yeah. You see where we're yeah, going here? Yeah, I like it. Uh -huh. Now, you could do you could frozen corn. You could do fresh corn, whatever mm -hmm. you want to do. We're going to take some taco seasoning. Can you see yeah, what I'm doing? Yeah, see what I'm doing? sounds good. Two tablespoons. We're going to mix all it up. I'm going to come back with a little bit of cumin because I really like that. We're going to take some lime. We're going to squeeze some lime okay. in there. We're going to take some jalapeno peppers. We're going to take some cilantro. Now we're going to let that cook and get all comfortable. It's going to loosen up and get Yum. all, all yummy. But we're going to show you how to make this next recipe. And usually this is tripled or quadrupled. Right. We take a bunch of Hawaiian buns, and I know everything today is easy, and I know everything today is, is kind of like, this is made for the sports lovers. Mm -hmm. And this time of year, we're really busy. We want to fix something quick. We want to fix something good. We had a leftover pork, and we're going to show you what we do with it. All right, we're going to take the Hawaiian buns, and I kind of broke a big package in half, and we're going to cut them so that we can make sandwiches out of them, cut them right down the middle, okay, and fold them over, and then we're going to put your pork in there, layer your pork, and you're going to spread barbecue sauce all over that. My your homemade, personal homemade right. barbecue sauce. Your yummy sauce. And then we're going to layer some cheese. I think is it you said pepper jack cheese? We pepper have? jack cheese. All right. And then we're and gonna, you can use whatever you want. You can use yeah, Swiss, Swiss, Monterey Jack. Then we're going to close those up. Then we're going to melt some butter, probably about half a stick, however much you want. And we're going to take a brush, brush that over those, and coat them up really good. And we're going to sprinkle some sesame seeds. 
Then we're going to cover them with foil and let them go 10 minutes so everything can kind of steam together and melt that cheese. And then after 10 minutes, we'll uncover them and give them another 10 minutes uncovered and kind of crisp them up and make them brown. Yum! Yay! I don't even know where to start. It looks so good. You delicious. know what though? I've, I've, I've been smelling that dip. It's out of control. That looks really good. I'll put my little. And I want Why do I always want to say cilantro? Because you say it. I know. You say cilantro. Yeah, whatever. You got a little cilantro on there. Mmm. What a great way to use your pork. Really good. All right, I want all that. You can't have any more. I can sit in front of the TV and just eat this all night and watch a good show. That's really good. Good job. Mmm. Now look here. We got sliders. Yum. Wow. Mm. Hawaiian mm. buns. You can't go wrong with a Hawaiian bun on there. Mm. 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 Wow. So you got your friends coming over. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at this stuff and saying, wow, you spent a lot of time. You say, yes, we did. That pulled pork was 12, 13 That's hours. True. Two days ago. That's right. But you know what? Really, seriously, the things that you can do with leftovers are wonderful. Yes. And again, we've been running around like crazy. The farm's getting crazy. The weather's bad. Yeah. We're cooking syrup down like crazy. And a lot of times you want something quick. All right, let's finish this up. Let's take a bite so we can go check our syrup. Now, what we're going to do, the next step, I checked a minute ago. It's been several hours. Right. It's almost down to that two inch mark. When it gets down to two inch mark, I'm going to trade it out into this pan. When it gets down to two inches there, I may go one step smaller. And when it gets down to the point where I know we got about, we're looking at two cups or so, I'm gonna start getting it up to around that point where it needs to be. I'm gonna pour it off. We're gonna filter it one last time through a coffee filter. Okay. And again, this is just this is just the, the Farmer Joe way to do it. After that, you have a wonderful maple syrup. It's already getting sweet. You know how it is. Yeah. It's starting oh, to get sweet. It's better we'll check better. it here in a minute. Let's take a bite. You brewing coffee? You remember the little coffee thing that we did, yeah. that I had that yeah. we talked about? This works perfect for that. But the, here's where we are, and we're going to probably end up with a little over a cup, maybe a cup and a half. And that was only 18,000 hours of work. Ooh. So we've had several recipes a day mm -hmm. for the sports fan and stuff right. that's just quick carbs. Right. you got to work. you got to right. get something done. You want something good. Where would you go to find stuff like that? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. I go there when I No, go. you don't. Yes, I do. What is it? Timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, always. Now you can see everything we've done in the past, That's which right. is 8 billion things. A gazillion. And if you want to take a look at those, they're right there. Also, click on subscribe. That way, anytime anything new comes out, boom, you get notified. Right. And if you just wanted to be on our Facebook page, Mrs. Farmer, what would you do? I'd hit like. That's all you got to do. There's nothing complicated. We've had a heck of a show. Mm -hmm. We've talked about... Planning by the signs. That's right. Get your farmer's almanac. And we thank Philip for dropping by. That's right. And talking with us about the planning by the signs. It's going to be here for you. Know what? Thank That's goodness. Right. Bring spring, please. That's right. I'm ready. So at this point, after we're exhausted from our syrup mm -hmm. endeavors, it's, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. You ready to eat some more? I am. I think I'm taking that first. Okay. <laughs> To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to... CKY Canoe, Kentucky. Furniture World Superstore. Housewarmings. Lodge Cast Iron. Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.